Don't get scammed renting an RV. Whether you're renting an RV for the first time or you're considering renting your RV out for extra income, here are seven things you need to know before renting an RV, whether you're the owner or the renter. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. We RV pursuing freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. It is, and it's too short to be getting scammed. We just saw this article on RV travel. We were horrified when we heard what had happened to this person. We realized that we need to share what we learned ASAP so this doesn't happen to you. So we'll link to the story below, but it all started on the up and up. He was communicating with the owner, and then the owner asked him if he could be paid via PayPal instead of through the site. And he got cute and thought, hey, I'll save that money and go directly to the owner. Bad idea. RV Share is the third party or the facilitator of a transaction. They basically are the risk management company. They pair people up with people who are looking for RVs to rent and people who are looking to rent the RVs. It's a fantastic platform. There's literally thousands of different RVs to choose all over the country. You can also see reviews by owners and also from renters about what they thought about renting this RV. So you can see any bugs that are in there. They're actually the largest platform for rental RVs in the country. During the whole COVID crisis, they created a platform where if you had an RV, you could lend it to first responders and nurses. And they also partnered with RVs for MDs. If you're considering renting an RV, we have a link below. And if you guys have any questions about our rental experience, we'd love to hear in the comments. A lot of misinformation is out there about renting an RV. I think it's gonna be something that in the future becomes really, really popular. Yep. Let's start with the first thing you must know if you're gonna rent an RV. And this one applies to the sellers. It's really important if you're going to be renting your RV for extra income that you have a little instruction booklet. Sounds simple, sounds minimal, but it makes a huge difference and we found ourselves digging in that instruction booklet. Yeah, because think about it guys, if you're gonna own an RV and you're not sure exactly who's renting from you, you want to make it as simple as possible for the person renting to know how to operate the RV. And the first thing you need to know if you're going to rent an RV is think long and hard of how you're going to use it because not all RVs are designed for the same purpose. Some RVs are better suited for the beach. Some are better suited for a party, right? Right. Some will go into national parks, some state parks. They all have different specs. So mm -hmm. make sure you know exactly what you're going to use this RV for. Mm -hmm. Number two is the same whether you're renting out your RV or renting an RV for the first time. Do not be afraid to over communicate. Exactly. So you can reach out to the owner and you can ask as many questions as you'd like. Everything on these things is negotiable. If there's a term that you need to negotiate, you can do it right there in the system so everything's on the up and up and recorded. I mean, you should also have each other's phone numbers in case anything ever happens. But usually but that won't happen until you actually make a transaction. Exactly. So be wary of anybody that is trying to get you off of the platform because right. you lose that protection. So it would be just like, which we are highly against, going through Craigslist or a newspaper article, hey, yes. rent my RV. Don't ever do that. It's too dangerous. And don't assume that just because you've tried other RVs before or your renter has tried other RVs before that they know how to work your specific RV. It's so important to have a good relationship with the person that you're going to be making this transaction with through RV Share. Now Mike in our example actually let us park our truck at his house so we trusted him and he trusted us. RVers are good people. If you need a favor just ask. The worst right. they could say is no. Exactly. One of the best ways to make sure that you're renting an RV from a good person is to check out their reviews. They will tell you so much about the person. And likewise, you have a lot of power in the review that you leave. So if you have a good experience with someone, leave them a phenomenal review. And if you don't, be as fair as possible, but warn the next person. So that review system is crucial to picking the right RV. Exactly, and we would suggest you be very careful with people that have no reviews. Mm -hmm. Remember, 
RV share can only do so much for yeah. people that want to rent their RVs. And until they actually rent the RV, they're not gonna know what type of people those are they're renting from. Now, you could probably get a cheaper vehicle or a lower rate vehicle sure. with no stars, right? Yeah. Because they're looking you know, to get somebody to give them a review. We live in a review economy now. We were very careful to pick an RV that had rental history. Mm -hmm. All right, so tip number three are really important considerations. If you're considering renting out your RV to make extra money, you really need to consider the depreciation and the mileage. Exactly, and remember guys, if it's your baby, do you wanna rent it out or not? And if you are going to rent it out you want to be protected with as much insurance as you possibly can be and on the renting side if you're going to rent an RV you need to consider the location and the mileage so sometimes you can negotiate that they bring the RV to you but really consider not just the right type of RV what you're going to be using it for but where you're picking it up right. because the transaction did limit the mileage that we could put on the RV per day we rented it exactly and you guys will find all this right on the platform in the fine print what's allowed for the generator hours what's allowed for miles and in our case Mike had allowed 1200 miles for the entire week we thought we were gonna be at around 13 or 1400 we close. it was super close so we shot Mike a message and we said hey would you mind throwing us in a couple of hundred miles without charging us the per mile over and he agreed to do that the fourth tip that applies to both listing and renting an RV is that details matter. Right, the devil's in the detail, guys. Make sure that you read everything in these postings. One of the things that made our renting experience really positive was that we rented our RV from somebody who took the care to have coffee in the RV. Right. They left us with a little bit of water. The light switches, and this is something I think all our viewers should do, were labeled. Talk about a revolutionary concept. Yeah, think about this guys. If it's your RV and you love the RV, you want to make it as simple and as easy as possible for whoever it is that's renting your RV to be able to use it, right? He had marked all of the switches in the inverter on a main map. So we knew everything we needed to know about this RV. Plus, he even had a grill for us, he had chairs for us, and he had a table for us. Yeah. So all we needed was food. All right, you guys ready to go? We're ready. Ready? And if you're renting an RV, the details also matter in that you need to pay attention to all the emails you're going to get. You're gonna get paperwork. So you wanna be very, very meticulous keeping your files organized and make sure that you have any and all numbers handy that you might need. It's so important that you videotape and inspect the vehicle that you're picking up or the vehicle that you're lending out or renting yeah. out. You really gotta you know, keep really good records on the condition that it was in before you took it. And it's so easy. I mean, we all have a camera with our phones. Just walk around that thing. Right. And in our case, we actually recorded the walkthrough, which was nice. So then if we forgot a detail, we could just go back. Wait, what did he say that was for again? Because there's a lot of information. I mean, you'd think it would be easy because it was a small van, but there's right. a lot of buttons in that little van. Yeah, and it's a great idea. Just pull your cell phone out, hit the record button, and as the owner is doing a walkthrough with you, just record all of it. Yeah. Um, we we went the entire way so that he showed us where the hoses were. He showed us where the public water was. He showed us where the tanks were. He showed us where the pumps were. And so there was a couple of times that we forgot what Mike had shown us and all we had to do is go to our phones and look back. Oh, here he is. He's talking about it right here. That's where the inverter is. So both sides really need to pay attention to the details. The fifth thing that they did that was really smart was that they told us that we had their baby. Huh? My baby. It's your baby. <laughs> Mike owns two rigs that he rents out through RV shares and then him and his wife use the rig for two or three months per year and the renting it out makes that payment for them which is you know really really, really it's really really smart but this rig was a brand new 2020 we were the second people to rent it and Mike made it clear to us that this was his and his wife's baby. So it just gave us a certain amount of respect mm -hmm. and we wanted to be careful with it because they were really nice people. I would want somebody to take care of our RV like it's their baby. Right, if I had that 2020 Travato, I would never rent it out to somebody that I did not know. 
But if I had made a decision to do so, man, I would I would ask them so many questions. <laughs> I would tear them apart. I would want background checks. I <laughs> Who was your first grade teacher? <laughs> what grade did you get? <laughs> well, and on the flip side, if you're going to be renting an RV, you know, there are other companies you can rent from. A lot of them have fleet services. So that means that they have like 20 of the same type of RV. You have to ask yourself if that's really something that you want to do, if that's really something that's conducive to how you want to RV. The nice thing about being able to rent from a whole bunch of different people is that you get access to a whole bunch of different RVs. So if you're considering renting out your RV to make extra money, you can list your RV for free and earn up to $40,000 a year in income. So that could, and, and we're not giving you financial advice, it could offset the payment depending on how you did things. Exactly. And companies like RV Share mitigate the risk. They may give you all the policies you need so that you are covered if something goes wrong. And on the flip side, if you're going to be renting an RV, you really need to be realistic. So for one in the scheduling, don't set yourself up for failure by saying I'm going to pick it up and then 45 minutes later I'll be driving to this national park. Allocate time so that you can take your time in the walkthrough and allocate time for filling the RV with your things. I mean that can take some time as well. Yeah, we took a day. We went up and we got the RV. We did a two and a half hour walkthrough with Mike and his wife. So we we were very familiar with how the RV worked and where everything was. And then we brought it back to our campground. We set it up next to Piper and we started playing with what else we needed for food and stuff like that. But it's such a good idea to give yourself plenty of time, mm -hmm. you know, to get familiarize yourself with the vehicle and get everything you want before you set out on your trip. Yeah, and the other thing you really need to be realistic about is the budget. So it's going to cost a little bit more than you might think for the gas, you know, for food. Even if you're cooking your own food and you got a fridge and you're doing it all on your own, make sure that you're very realistic when it comes to your budget because renting an RV is not like a regular vacation. It's really not. And you know, it's funny, a lot of people would say to themselves, man, $2,000, $3,000 a week to rent an RV um, is a lot of money. But when you think about it and you weigh that against the cost of hotels, the cost of eating out, you know, we believe in try before you buy. Spending 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars in a new RV that you have no idea and you've never actually lived in, it's really not that much of a risk. It's so much cheaper than buying the wrong RV. Because you and your family can go out in an RV, get the feel of it, and see if you like it or not. So tip number seven is do not go it alone that is how you get scammed exactly make sure you go through a company that knows how to handle these transaction and covers your butt no matter which side of the transaction you're on yeah so if you're going to rent out your rv one of the nice things that rv share offers is that they will offer a renter insurance policy on your rv so heaven forbid anything happen you're covered. Exactly. They also take care of roadside. If you're renting the roadside protection that they offer all of the transactions will protect you. But you also have a third party that manages the money so heaven forbid somebody flakes out you're protected. So if you're renting an RV and somebody says let's be PayPal friends that's a big, big <laughs> caution. You want that third party to oversee the transaction to protect you. And check out our next video, Van Life Newbies. This is the van that we rented from RV Share and Mike. It was so cool. Enjoy the next video, guys.